So that was the hard part. Here comes the easy part. So I'd like to welcome everyone to City Hall and to say happy Pride Week. It's a wonderful occasion for us to be gathered here uh, on the rooftop podium uh, because today we're going to raise the rainbow flag. Yeah. As the City Council for Ward 27, home, yes, let's hear for Ward 27. You're in Ward 27 of the Pride Week Festival, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to kick off the summer. We do that every year when we launch Pride Week. This is the official start of the 32nd annual Pride Week in the City of Toronto. The rainbow flag, sometimes called the freedom flag, was popularized as a symbol for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, pride, diversity, sexual liberation, in San Francisco in 1978. There's a lot of history to this flag. Our rainbow flag being raised symbolizes the communities that we belong to. And some may think that the LGBTQ community is beyond this sort of thing. We've already arrived. We've got our rights. Members of the LGBT family know that Pride Week is not just a party and a time to celebrate and what a party it is. 
but it's also a time to demonstrate and to redouble our efforts to, to achieve true and meaningful equality. Young people are unable to come out of the closet for fear of family and community rejection. And they know that Pride is not just a cultural event, which it certainly is, but it's also a global human rights movement. LGBT seniors, growing old and sometimes alone, being forced to go back into the closet so that they can receive quality long-term care, know that the struggle for equality is still real, and for them, it's a matter of life and death. Let's not, the, let's not forget that this sort of thing is only a dream in many parts of the world, including small towns and socially conservative cities in Canada. Let's not forget that when we raised the rainbow flag in Toronto, a teenager in remote northern Ontario is given a beacon of hope that there is another way of being in this world and that he or she is not alone. The LGBT community is an important, diverse part of our city. In a city where culture flourishes and neighborhoods grow, we have cause to celebrate the harmony in which we coexist. This year, Pride Toronto and the Pride Committee will once again recognize outstanding individuals and groups for their continuing work, either directly in the community or actions that reflect so well upon us. On behalf of City Council, I'd like to acknowledge the following individuals for their contributions. Grand Marshals, the Honorable Laurel Broughton, and MPP for Parkdale High Park, Sherry DeNovo. These two fine individuals, these two fine humanitarians led the way for us this year. And they did so without a court challenge. They did so in the Ontario Legislative Assembly, and we thank them. The Honor Group is no, one, no other than the LGBT Youth Line, who last night held an extraordinary award fundraiser for their community. Thank you to the Youth Line. The Youth Line in so many ways is a lifeline to LGBT teenagers in Ontario. Our honored dyke this year is extra reporter Andrea Houston. <laughs> Andrea covers the news for the community when oftentimes there is no other voice. Honor dyke group this year is women's health in women's hands. <laughs> They have done extraordinary work putting women's reproductive issues, women's sexual health on the map, and we thank them for the work and the quality contributions that they've given to the community. This year's International Grand Marshal is Goran Malektik, and Pride Toronto will be speaking more about his contributions later on. And he is here joining us today. Welcome, Goran, to the City of Toronto. I'm also honored to have Francisco Alvarez and Luca Amona, who are the Pride co-chairs here on the stage. Thank you very much for your attendance today. And I'd like to acknowledge you for the work that you've done and the leadership that you've shown this community. Also in attendance, and this is a very long list, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll forget. Oh, here already. You're forgetting folks. Um, I'd like to acknowledge some very special people who are here today. Aside from the, the folks I've already mentioned, Sherry DeNovo, Lauren Broughton, we also have Kathleen Wynn, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Housing and Aboriginal Affairs, longtime champion of lesbian gay equality. We also have Member of Parliament, Carolyn Bennett, one of my favorite MPs on the Hill. Joining us, right behind me to my left, are City Councilors Gord Pert, Mary Fragedakis, Paula Fletcher, Mike Layton. I'm slowing down a little bit. <laughs> Councilor Josh Matlow, Councilor Chin Lee, 
Councillor Michael Thompson, who's our Chair of Economic Development, who's a big champion for Pride, as they all are. <laughs> Councillor John Fillion, Councillor Josh Cole, Councillor Karen Stintz, Councillor Raymond Cho, Councillor Glenda Bearmaker, Councillor Sarah Doucette, Councillor Janet Davis, who's also a proud Deep Flag mom. <laughs> Councillor Jay Robinson, Councillor Peter Milton, Councillor Frank DiGiorgio, Councillor Paul Ainsley, Councillor Michelle Berardinetti, Councillor Gary Crawford, Councillor and Deputy Mayor Doug Holliday, Speaker of our Chambers, Councillor Francis Nunziata, Councillor Mary Margaret McMahon, Councillor Joe Mehevic. I'd also like to call to the stage to read the Mayor's Proclamation, Councillor Shelley Carroll. I take that applause for that long list. Uh, hard to read a proclamation in the wind, but we're going to do our best. Uh, the Pride Week proclamation is one of many, but not all of them. It's one of many city proclamations that is also translated into Canada's other official language, French. I won't be reading it in French. <laughs> But I will be presenting it to Francisco and Luca today in, in, in both versions. So, uh, without further ado, Pride Week, June 22nd to July 1st. Whereas Toronto's Pride Week is one of our city's largest cultural events, you bet, and it contributes to its economic vitality by attracting thousands of visitors to its parades and week-long celebrations. The people of Toronto have established a caring and compassionate society based on the inherent dignity of all of its members. Toronto's strong, vibrant, and proud queer community is the third largest in North America. Wait, wait a second. Queer Toronto, you can do better than that. We need bigger numbers. we number two by next year. the third largest in North America and it plays an important part in the rich diverse fabric of our city and our culture in a world too often marked by clashes and violence between people who see differences as a reason for conflict Pride Week provides another opportunity to celebrate the harmony in which we can coexist Pride Week celebrates the diversity of our city and contributes to raising awareness about discrimination and other barriers that affect employment, affect housing, affect public safety, policing, health care, education, and the very recognition of family relationships. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Rob Ford, <laughs> as Pride Week in the City of Toronto.
I'd also, of course, I, I knew I was going to forget a few people. I also want to acknowledge a couple more city councillors. Uh, Councillor Caesar Palacio, who's with us. Councillor Joe Mahevic. Barbara Hall is joining us, past mayor. Current Chief Commissioner of the Ontario Human Rights Commission. And I see my friend right behind her, Reverend Brent Hawks. Now I'd like to bring back the uh, the Pride Toronto co-chairs to to say a few words. On behalf of the board of directors of Pride Toronto, thank you for joining us today and for all of Pride Week 2012. We'd like to start by thanking our incredible volunteers and staff at Pride Toronto, who've worked so hard all year to make Pride happen. <laughs> We've been thrilled to work with them and inspired by their dedication and commitment. In addition, we thank the community groups, local businesses and sponsors who help us put on the festival. We also welcome and thank our allies who work throughout the year to promote understanding and support for our communities and loved ones. Today in particular, we thank our hosts and supporters, the City of Toronto. Thank you. Uh, before we go on, I also like to acknowledge what is now becoming uh, a Flag Day tradition. I want to welcome and thank the kids from the Clinton Street Public School. Yeah. Pride Week is an opportunity for us to gather as communities to celebrate the cultures we've built together and to demonstrate our unbreakable commitment to acceptance diversity and respect for lesbians, gay, bisexual, transsexual, transgender, intersex, queer, questioning, and two-spirited people. This year's theme is celebrate and demonstrate. We celebrate our shared culture and our successes, and together we demonstrate against bigotry and intolerance while we demonstrate our commitment to equality, acceptance, diversity, and love. This past year has brought us significant triumphs to celebrate, as well as some sober reminders that we must continue together in struggle to build an inclusive, caring society. We have been moved and inspired by the successful efforts of the trans community activists to have the prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of gender identity and expression added to the Ontario Human Rights Code. But we've also been moved to sadness and anger by stories of suicide and bullying against young people in our schools. But we've been inspired by the tenacity and resilience of those young leaders who have persisted and finally won protection for gay straight alliances in all Ontario schools, including Catholic schools. Of course, we acknowledge that legislation in itself doesn't resolve all our struggles. Even once legislation is in place, we must work together to ensure social change and vigilance against those who want to prevent it. We must work together to ensure the workplace is a welcoming and supportive place to come out. We must work together to ensure that people living with HIV AIDS are free from discrimination and stigma and are supported medically and socially. We must work together to ensure that the rights, freedoms and support we gain are shared equally within every culture and community in Canada without discrimination. We must work together to ensure that our communities and our country are welcoming places for refugees who are fleeing violence and bigotry. It's a worldwide symbol of hope, diversity, acceptance and peace. Pride is both local and a global movement. We stand in solidarity with all LGBTQ2SA communities everywhere who struggle for justice and freedom. Today, Pride Toronto welcomes our International Grand Marshal, Goran Milicic, who will be sharing his story with our community from his 
hometown in Serbia, as well as other countries in Eastern Europe, and especially in the Balkans, where pride is often banned, met with open mass violence and political indifference or clear hostilities. In the coming week, we celebrate the Pride Festival in Toronto as part of a global movement built on generations of hard work by activists who stood up and said we won't be silenced or bullied anymore, who threw off their shame and said we are proud of who we are and we belong here. We build on that work all year and this week we celebrate who we are together. As we look forward to an exciting Pride Week in 2012, we also have an eye on the World Pride in 2014, which is an international celebration of education, activism, culture, and history of the LGBTQ communities here in Toronto, in Ontario, in Canada, and globally. Toronto in 2014 welcomes the world, and we ask you to join us on this journey as we look to bring our brothers and sisters from across the globe here to Toronto to share our culture and learn from their stories. Pride Week is a celebration of who we are as individuals and community. This year, in addition to the parade, the Dyke March, Trans Pride, and the Street Fair, which has become an integral part of Toronto summer, we'll host a festival that covers 20 city blocks, showcasing queer talent and culture with 296 artists on seven stages. We will also host Family Pride, Blockarama in cooperation with Blackness Yes for our Afro-Caribbean communities. Fruit Loops with Soy featuring talent from and for youth. A substance-free, clean, sober and proud space. And for the first time, a three-day stage dedicated to programming by and for the trans and gender variant communities. On behalf of Pride Toronto, we welcome everyone and we, enjoy, we ask you to join us in celebrating what's going to be a wonderful Pride in 2012. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so. Now it's in its seventh year, Pride Toronto has been extending the reach of their considerable influence by also having International Grand Marshal. The queer community in Canada enjoys just about every freedom and protection available and even more so since last week. So the Pride Committee thought that they would raise awareness in Canada of queer and trans issues and other parts of the world where basic human rights are lacking. This year's International Grand Marshal, Goran Milekcik, hails from Belgrade, Serbia. He has worked with human rights and minority NGOs in southeastern Europe to lobby for the adoption of inclusion of anti-discrimination legislation in Western Balkan countries. In addition to his work as a human rights activist, Goran is a key organizer of the Equality for Sexual Minorities Justice in Balkans Conference and the current program director of the Civil Rights Defender for the Western Balkan States, an international organization that aims to defend people's civil and political rights and I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the presence of John Tory, former provincial leader of the Progressive Conservative Party in Ontario, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. The strength of our communities in Toronto is the key to the city's success. The strong backbone of Toronto includes the fine employees of the City of Toronto who work around the clock to ensure that city services are delivered to you and your families. They are also here today supporting you. All throughout today's official activities and proceedings and leading up to the organizing of today's proclamation, they have been working quietly and diligently behind the scenes. And so we know that the city's services that are, be delivering to you, that are being delivered to you and your family are being delivered by LGBT employees as well at the City of Toronto and they do so with pride. QP 
Local 79 at the City, TCHC and Bridgepoint provide value services across the diverse communities that make up Toronto. QP Local 79 members take care of Toronto with pride. Local 79 is excited to be playing a role in celebrating to Toronto's diversity by participating in the Pride Parade and also by, by sponsoring today's yummy lunch will be served right behind the uh, those those three trees right over there. So thank you very much, President Tim McGuire, for joining us here today. I'd like Mr. V to, to come to the to the front. Mr. V. Mr. V is our Kiwi, <laughs> and uh, he has brought students from Clinton Public School to be here and we know that the generation who's led the way to build this clear path is for the generation behind and right over here sitting behind Mr. V are the students from his class. Let's give them a big round of applause. You'll see them, they're the little guys. They're raising the rainbow flag at age six, age seven. Now I'm going to ask you to, to turn your attention to the flagpole behind me. It is time for us to raise... Please stay for lunch. Enjoy the afternoon.